In sub-Saharan Africa, farmers and fishers can produce more than enough food to feed everyone. Yet hunger rose sharply during the COVID pandemic, and small-scale food producers and traders suffered disastrous losses, even when there was enough food. A food system connects all people involved in inputs and production with those who process, transport, sell and export food. When COVID hit, every country's government had to decide how to respond. South Africa, Ghana and Tanzania represent different kinds of food systems. South Africa is the most unequal country in the world. Much of the food comes from large-scale farming and is sold through supermarkets. But huge numbers of poor people farm, fish, and sell food for their livelihoods. The government placed the country in a swift, far-reaching lockdown. Many people lost their jobs. Street traders, who provide food to low-income people cheaply, were not allowed to sell, pushing consumers to the formal sector, which then profited. Export bans also favoured big companies and industrial fishers with cold storage capacity. Despite good catches and harvests, hunger increased. This is because food prices rose faster than inflation and supermarkets and big food processors made record profits. So the poor lost out as producers and as consumers. In Tanzania, the government did not impose a general lockdown, but did restrict travel. And to avoid infection, Tanzanians adapted their behavior by reducing trips to open markets and public gatherings. Border closures by neighboring countries reduced incomes for small-scale farmers, fishers and traders reliant on cross-border trade. Closed borders also drove up the prices of imported foods. At the same time, the loss of tourism and exports meant some prices dropped, making nutritious food like fish more accessible to local people. Overall, with fewer regulations in a largely informal food system made up of many small enterprises, Tanzania showed greater resilience. In Ghana, the government's response was between the two, with a strong short-term lockdown in the two biggest cities and modest restrictions on movement within the country. Street trade ground to a halt. Migrant laborers couldn't travel between regions and truck drivers couldn't always transport produce to cities and towns. While most Ghanaians shop at local markets, reliance on cross-border trade made some farmers and traders vulnerable to losses. Transport disruptions led to price spikes. But, with many farmers selling locally and many traders buying, there was resilience in Ghana's food system. In all three countries, producers lost markets and incomes because people didn't have money to buy and big events stopped. Governments tried to help, but this was often inconsistent and reinforced inequalities. In South Africa, food relief was usually once-off and bought from big companies cutting out smaller producers. So communities organized to share food. Government provided social grants to the unemployed and distributed relief vouchers to farmers to buy inputs. But this wasn't the support they needed when they couldn't afford to get produce to market and customers were dwindling. Meanwhile, small-scale fishers didn't get any relief. In Ghana and Tanzania, Access to credit reduced due to stricter lending terms and closure of facilities. In Ghana, the government offered loans to micro and medium scale entrepreneurs, but conditions disqualified the informal sector, many of whom are women. Hmm. Across Africa, women bear the double burden of earning incomes and childcare. This intensifies when schools are closed, also putting an end to school meals. Some businesses survived by moving online to market their produce, using mobile banking to transfer payments and couriers to deliver food. But this requires knowledge, access to technology and money for data, often marginalizing older people and women. 
COVID shows that long supply chains dominated by big corporates are less resilient than localized food systems with short supply chains. Future crises can and should be handled better. Africa has all the resources to build a just food system that supports livelihoods, provides enough nutritious food for everyone, and can withstand shocks like pandemics and climate change. Rather than growing corporate control over Africa's food, power over food systems must be placed in the hands of the millions of African women and men who feed the continent. <laughs>